On today's episode of the Mod Guide, we take a culinary excursion to the wide world of food mods. Be that mods that add new recipes, up the variety of food that can be found in the world, or mods that change some of the mechanics. There is plenty out there to take a look at today, and let's start with one of the most basic but useful ones. And before we begin, I want to thank Kato Phoenix for her lovely artwork for today's video. Now let's dig in, shall we? This mod is one of the simplest but most useful mods of the bunch in my opinion. Much like with auto drink, which can be toggled in the options, this mod gives you the ability to favorite foods, which will mark them to be auto eaten whenever your hunger kicks in. Keep in mind there are some restrictions to this mod. The item must be in your main inventory, if it's a can, the item must be opened, and it must be marked using a star as the favorite items. Once the game knows you want the game to eat that when you get hungry, it will do so. Overall, it's quite basic, but very useful. One other thing I'd like to note is the fact that items won't be eaten until you meet or exceed the hunger value that item provides. So it won't eat, say, a whole ass chicken when you're just slightly peckish. Also, I'd recommend potentially using the minimal display mod to monitor your hunger. You wouldn't want to get caught eating when you're trying to fight a horde now, would ya? This is yet another good mod from Chuckleberry Finn, who, if you remember, created the skill recovery journal featured in the death mod video. This mod has basically one overall goal. It makes experiencing and using jarred foods easier. It accomplishes this goal in two ways. First, it causes jars of already jarred food to spawn. This is useful as the food within has a much longer shelf life than regular fresh food, as jarred food has a two month shelf life before it goes stale. And even then it won't rot till around 150 in-game days or five in-game months. Method two, this mod helps is by making the items needed the jar more abundant. Sugar, vinegar, and lids spawn more frequently than base levels, coupled with the fact that you get both the jar and the lid back when you unjar something means no more losing that pesky lid and eventually not being able to can anything. Instead, it goes right back in your pocket like it should. So now you can more easily afford to create those jarred foods. Just be sure to remember to cook the foods that you make so they don't rot on you. Once done, then you're good and ready to consume whenever you next need that jar. Overall, Kick Doc, you made a useful addition. It is indeed strange you've never seen anyone jarring food before the apocalypse, even though they already have all the materials in their cupboards. This mod, while it's a standalone part of the litter mod plugin, More Edibles, I prefer to use it on its own. And thanks to the creator, he has made that a reality. I didn't have any real interest in the litter part of the mod, so just getting the addition of some useful beverage is a much nicer deal for me. Now these babies basically add two energy drinks to the game. That being a monster and a Red Bull knockoff. But outside of the packaging, these two drinks are exactly the same. They both provide a decent pile of hunger, thirst, endurance, and fatigue relief that can provide the edge to any player fighting off the hordes of the undead or running for their lives. Basically, it's a much more effective version of some of the plants provided by Herbalist, but on the downside, they do seem to be pretty rare and uncommon, at least in the few test runs I ran. Though I could have also just been repeatedly unlucky. Overall, this mod's a nice, simple solution to a widespread problem facing many players. Thanks, Sarog, for this tiny but cool mod. As a connoisseur of all things spicy, this mod really appeals to me. Sure, it's probably one of the most basic of picks I could have made, but I mean, I apply sriracha or other hot sauces to pretty much anything I cook in this house, either as part of the cooking process or as adding some extra oomph 
to something like a cold cut sandwich. Now this mod adds six varieties of hot sauce throughout the world, though you'll have to search high and low to track them all down. The nice thing about adding hot sauce is it relieves both boredom and unhappiness when you add it to the meals, which is a nice way to take care of those needs for food once again. Couple it with some salt and pepper and BAM! You got a meal fit for a king, or at least the king of the trailer park. Once again, Planet Algol manages to find his way onto one of these videos. I guess he just knows how to catch my eye with simple but effective mods. Thanks, mate! This mod gives you power, in the form of knowledge. The mod made by Eris gives you the ability to know when food will expire. This mod by default requires you to use Nutritionist if you want to put the mod to its fullest potential, but even without Nutritionist, it still gives you a rough idea when food will expire by listing five phases. These phases are very fresh, fresh, looks okay, almost rotten, and last but not least, rotten. However, with Nutritionist, you get an exact amount of time for how long until the food rots away into nothing, which lets you prioritize what needs to be eaten first. Packaged food, however, you always know the expiration date, because it comes with the best buy or use by date on the packaging itself, which is nice, and the mod even takes into account weeks, months, or years instead of days or hours. And if you want to turn off the nutritionist requirement, you can edit the .lua file to disable it, and several other options as well. One other good thing about this mod from Eris is the fact that it takes into account whatever settings you have in Sandbox for rot speed and fridge factor which fridge factor slows down the rot speed of food drastically. One last thing to note is the nutritionist perk added by the fitness instructor does not seem to work, so you have to take the standalone nutritionist trait if you want to make use of this mod to its fullest potential. This mod seeks to increase and expand the recipe systems even further beyond what the vanilla game already has, which is a laudable goal in my opinion. Created by Slender Green, this mod takes food creation up a notch by adding dozens of new recipes, which allow you to create many of the foods that you find within the world already, such as cupcakes, cookies, waffles, and more. It also lets you create things such as pasta, yeast, and other uncommon limited ingredients, allowing you to keep your supply going. It also adds other nice features such as the ability to ferment your own alcohols, which if you're like me, you like burning hordes of the undead with. Overall, I like the mod, and it expands Zomboid's cooking variety that much more. I also like the fact that Slender chose to balance the mod by adding cooking level requirements, so you can't just make everything whenever you want. Though I do feel some of the balancing is a little weird, like, why do you need level 8 cooking to make a dozen cookies? That's a little extreme. Another recipe mod, but this one seeks to add some traditional American noms to the game. Created by Madman Andre, he seeks to fix the fact that late game your food options tend to become quite slim. Especially things like milk, cheese, butter, and also making proper burgers. You could do this by grinding animals into meat patties. This mod pretty much entirely succeeds at its goal. You'll obviously have to track down these new ingredients necessary in the creation of these items, as well as new equipment like hot dog and bun baking trays. But now you can create a bunch of food again, such as fries, burgers, fried chicken, hot dogs, and more. Overall, yeah, I like the mod, and I love the variety it adds, making what already exists more usable, and adding more to go alongside it. Yeah, this is a good idea. Corner Store Candies and Sodas, created by Austin3Rocker3, expands the snacks that you find within grocery stores and gas stations, and adds a nice variety of positive and negative effects to them. Featuring over 50 new items added, this mod really steps up the amount of snacks you're gonna find, and they're all knockoff names of traditionally well-known snacks. 
You got Morios, Quacks, Chit Chat Bars, Rolly Ranchers, and so on. And each one has different effects associated with them. Salty snacks like, say, potato chips raise your thirst while lowering hunger, while snacks like soda, due to their caffeine content, reduce fatigue and exertion, as well as hunger and thirst. Personally, I like this one a lot, as it makes the variety in stores and homes that much better with the amount of junk food. Just don't eat too much, not like like there's many dentists running around in the apocalypse applying their trade. Well, I think this just about covers this installment of food mods, and I know there's plenty more of them. So if you're interested in seeing more of these mods, or something else, then please feel free to ask, and I'll gladly consider looking at more. Before you go, I want to thank you for supporting the content down below, and to also ask you one more time to check out the fantastic artists. They did good work. This has been Core, and I'll see you next time.